All right, guys, so hello and welcome to uh, Advanced Flushing Instruction Part 1. Now, in this, in this video here, we're going to uh, concentrate on basically showing you guys uh, the variety and different styles of flushing beams out there. And hopefully from this video, uh, you'll be able to decide, you know, which, which style of flushing beam or flushing, uh, you know, beam setup is, is right for you. Now, first off, I really want to stress this, guys. You know, just because you see someone using one style or one variation of a flushing beam doesn't mean that that particular style will work for you. Uh, you know, you really need to keep an open mind about this. You know, a lot of this is just, uh, you know, getting a, a feel for it or, or being comfortable with the way that you're uh, you're doing it. You know, and a lot of that depends on uh, you know the height how tall you are, you know, so I mean, everybody wants to talk about angles and this, that, and the other. Well, that's, that's going to be a big variation depending on, you know, if you've got a guy that's a foot shorter than another guy. So, different things like that, just just please keep an open mind through all this and, you know, just just because uh, one, one thing works for one guy doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for everybody else. So, anyway, what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to go through, um, in its simplest form, basically the three basic styles or variations of the flushing beam and kind of give you uh you know my opinions on the pros and cons of of each you know so basically here here's what i want to start out with right here this is um this was the first flushing beam that i ever made i made it whenever i was like 14 years old uh this truly is a log uh, um i i went down and I cut down a pine tree in the backyard and I, I made a frame for it and this was my first flushing beam. This is nothing than a pine log, nothing more than a pine log. Uh, you know, like I said, that I put a frame on it and I kind of rounded it off. Uh, you know, and it, and it worked. Is it the best? In my opinion, no. <laughs> you know, a lot had to do with the construction of it. Like I said, I was 14. And I, looking back, I should have chose, uh, you know, a different material than pine, but you know, with all the knots in it and everything else, but basically with, with these log style of, of flushing beams, your more traditional style of beam like this, you see where you actually take the cased animal and you slide it over the, the beam itself. So you essentially are working on one side of the critter and then the other side's hanging off the back. With, these, with this style, with the log style, what I've got here is I've got a nail uh, that I've drove in the back and I've cut the head off of it and that's kind of where you hook your pelt you know around the nose area and then the whole pelt basically drapes down here on the beam and, and you work the pelt in that manner. Now you know it, it, it works it's worked for hundreds and hundreds of years that way. The only problem I have with that is especially on critters where you have to do a lot of shaving with your sharp side because uh, you know the critter is essentially double thickness there's a lot of cushion there because I mean there's both sides of his fur there now a lot of cushion is is not so good whenever you're shaving you know you have a tendency to dig in a lot more I find and so that that is my only gripe with with this style of beam is that there's almost too much cushion with that uh, whenever you move to your doll side and push it, it's really not that big of a deal Another thing is, if you're not using some sort of a clamping system, you're having to work the whole length of the critter all the way down, unless you can find some way to keep bringing it up. So you get extended a lot of the times, uh, and and you know that's no good. It changes the angle of your knife and everything else. But definitely a viable option. It's cheap. Like I said, you can literally go down and cut down a tree, uh, make a frame on it. After we get done talking about this, I'll, I'll move the camera and I'll show exactly the, the different setups that I've got and give you guys a little better idea. Um, but anyway, moving on to the second style of beam, and this is probably what 95% of you guys have seen or are using or will use. And this is your traditional wood flushing beam. This was actually the second beam that I made. This, is, uh, this was made out of a 2x6 that I, I rounded down and, and, and made uh, you know a, into a flushing beam. Now you'll notice on, on all these beams that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you four different beams. You'll notice that there is, there is, for the most part, a fairly flat spot right down the center of the beam. And uh, you know, 
the contact area on a beam is very important to the knife and, and we're going to get into that uh, really in depth in, in another part of the video but I just want to you know let you guys in and you know kind of keep that in mind while you're thinking about this you know that contact area with your knife it is really important but anyway this is this is a wood beam this worked I, I used this beam for for a couple of years it worked real good um, the harder the wood you can find the better whenever you're doing this now my biggest problem with the wood uh, flushing beam here with made out of the 2x6 is simply the width um, and and you guys that have been doing this for a while you'll know and for the guys that are starting out whenever you're flushing a critter the bigger the critter right you're draping him across this beam and you're having to work him so if you're working say like a, a bigger coyote or a beaver or something you know, that's a big critter that's a big pelt and if you've got a narrow beam you can only work that critter basically the width of the beam which means if you've got you know a, a large beaver you're gonna have to constantly roll that beaver uh, to work him all the way through if you would have say a wider beam you wouldn't have to do that you could basically work the critter from one side all the way uh, to the other so that is why I changed this this was a 2x6 uh, it just didn't have the width I mean you can use a 2x4 if you really want to there's there's lots of guys that do it problem is you're going to be working that critter on an area that's three and a half inches wide so what I did then was I moved up to this beam this was the third beam that I made this is made out of a 2x8 uh, you know and that's seven and a half inch wide uh, width is is pretty much universal you can pretty much work every critter you know from your uh, you know you can sometimes get a muskrat on it, but definitely your 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 smaller possums, your coons, all the way up, coyotes, foxes, uh, beavers. You know, a seven and a half inch beam. And if you look, the commercially available ones, that's what they're going to be. They're going to be in that seven to seven and three quarter inch range. You know, that's a pretty universal width that you can get a lot of critters on. So, uh, you know, a two by eight works real good. You can tell this beam's had had quite a bit of use. Now. The biggest problem with wood beams that I have found is what happens is, especially if you're pulling the critter up and you're working him right in that sweet spot right here in that first, you know, 10 inches or so of the top of the beam, what happens is, is you come down off that critter, off the skirt of him basically, you're coming off with your knife into the beam and naturally, you know, the wood is softer than the metal of the knife and so over time you will create a gouge and this wood you know as you come off you're gonna gouge into that wood now if you stay on top of it keep it sanded and round it down you won't have much of a problem but eventually what's gonna happen if you leave that gouge there as you're running that knife applying a lot of pressure or shaving you're gonna hit that gouge and there's a there's a good chance you're gonna uh, you know take a chance of, of cutting that, that pelt uh, you know so just be aware of that if you're using the wood beams uh, it, it happens you know you're gonna you're, you're just gonna have to watch it if I can suggest anything, I would suggest uh, either making your beam out of make your beam out of the hardest wood you can find. You know, uh, walnut or or locust or something something that's really really hard and that will resist the you know that that knife coming off that beam a lot more than you know. Don't make it out of uh, you know the soft pine or or soft maple or something you know such as that just because the beams easy to work and, and manufacture you know you're gonna fight it in years to come so that's beam style number two uh, like I said this by far definitely the most popular uh, you know it's it's worked it for years and years and it will continue to work now all that being said in my opinion if you want to step up to basically the top of the pyramid the Cadillac of of all of them you have here which is what I don't think I was making videos while I was still using wood beams this is probably what all you guys have ever seen me use in it all of my videos is a PVC PVC beam uh, you know I I went to this a number of years ago and I just have never looked back uh, all the benefits that you gain with with using this style of, uh, of a system are just incredible compared to you know your standard wood beam 
First off being the hardness. This PVC is a lot harder than wood. You can come off this beam time and time and time again and you will not gouge it uh, you know, like, like you do the, the wood beams. Also, if you, uh, if you use a system like where I do where you can have interchangeable fleshing beams, uh, you know, using, using the beam basically to match the critter becomes, you know, uh, a real easy thing. I can change these beams out in, you know, just a, a few seconds and I can work a narrow beam for, for smaller critters or I can have a big wide beam for a beaver. So, uh, I guess in reality, if you wanted to set up a whole bunch of wood beams to do the same thing, you could, but, but with the PVC, it's just so much easier. So, uh, like I said, this is, you know, this is not a viable, not really a viable option for everybody. It's it's definitely a lot more expensive to get into than you know your standard wood beam. You know, where you just go out to the lumber yard and buy a, a section of a board, make it. Uh, you know, there's a lot more work involved. But uh, in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. You know, I've got you can see right here behind me. This is this is the beaver one. It's 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 really wide. It's like ten and a half inches wide there. And I've got this one. This is that you know that kind of seven and a half inch wide beam and I've got smaller ones back there just to fit the critters so anyway as you can see there are a wide wide variety of uh, options that you have for flushing now the one other type that I've not talked about or discussed is what's called the English flushing system and uh, basically the beams the exact same just it, it it's it's a little longer now I personally don't have much experience with the English system I've I've run a jackhammer for too many years and nerves and my shoulders and I just can't hardly work above my my shoulders for long periods of time anymore uh, but the idea is that you have a beam like this mounted higher up either against the wall or in a bracket you slide the critter like this and you actually pull down and flush the critter in that nature from over your head uh, the beam's still the same just if you're thinking about using that system just remember you you're gonna need a little bit longer uh, longer beam you know depending on how you're how you're mounting it uh, as far as as lengths for the average guy you can get away with three foot three foot's uh, you know a pretty good pretty good length of uh, a flushing beam depending on how you mount it and everything else um, angles angles everybody wants to worry about angles it's the angle in which your flushing beam is mounted if you're using the traditional method where you're mounting it you know you, on the floor or on a wall or something it's really just personal preference uh, me personally I like a real steep angle where I can just use my arms you know as opposed to having to lean over where if you have your beam at more of a flatter angle and you have to you know kind of use your back a little bit more it's all personal preference I'm not gonna say one's the best uh, or worse than the other strictly because it, it's up to you guys to try out and uh, find out what's comfortable so anyway uh, I'm going to get the camera, I'm going to move here, and I'm going to just kind of show you the systems that I've had over the years basically and let you know what I'm using now and then hopefully that will give you guys some ideas. So first off we have here, this is the first beam I've talked about, the log style beam. Like I said, I made this many, many years ago. The frame on this one is actually just out of a, it's out of one by six material. Uh, you know, you can make it out of whatever really you want. Uh, you can see I've got a, a, a two by four just right there to kind of put rest of my foot on. Uh, it, it, you can see it is really, truly just a log. Um, the beam works nice. The angle, like I said, is completely up to you. Moving on to this, what would be the PVC beam or the wood style here, your more traditional beam you can see if you'd have a you know your your wood beam either mounted against the wall or on the floor or something like that uh, you know at that angle here in the instance of my PVC beam here you can see I've got the 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 beaver beam in here the wider one and you know with this system where I've made them interchangeable I can simply you know interchange the beams just like that in just a second or two and I can I can have different widths so you know this this setup here with the kind of the mobile stand area here it's, it's definitely more portable than against the wall but once again guys I'm not gonna say one's the better because the situation dictates uh, you know how and, and what 
what particular beam you use. So anyway, again with the, the English flushing system, if you, if you do choose that, you're going to end up with basically a hinged beam in this manner where you slide your pelt against the wall. So just, just be aware that you may need a little longer beam if you're going to use that particular method. All right, guys. So there it is. Uh, you know, hopefully you you've taken something from this video, especially the new guys out there that are just getting started. You know, hopefully this gives you some ideas of of the options that are out there. Uh, like I said before, a lot of this is personal preference. I you can preach all day long that one thing works for one guy and it it, it may not work for another guy. So you know. Take, take these options here that I've showed you, uh, you know, go through them and, and just choose the best that works for you. Um, also, I just want to stay here, you know, with these educational type videos like this, you know, sometimes it's very difficult for me to, to know what information to share with you guys. You know, I, I'm not trying to, to brag on myself, but I know what I'm doing, right? And so sometimes it's hard to, to know what information to, uh, to share with you guys, you know, especially the guys that are new to this and getting into it. Sometimes it's, you know, simplest stuff I may overlook. So if that is the case in any of these videos, feel free by all means to uh, to write me a comment or send me a, an email or do something. That's That was actually one of the reasons why I, I spent, I, I, there was such a gap between the intro video and this first video. I was, I was hoping that I may, uh, you know, get a few more comments of something I missed or, or anything else because I'm trying to share with you guys this that's my idea I'm trying to share with you guys uh, and basically you know lessen the the learning curve you know on a lot of this so if there's something that I missed something I didn't cover feel free let me know and you know I'm not opposed to to making a video to try to clear up any questions or concerns you have so anyway guys hope you took something from this hope you learned something uh, Part two will be uh, discussing the flushing knives, choosing the right flushing knives to fit you and, and everything else. So hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on part two.